an awesome, awesome medley of tunes that uh, just shares what an awesome God we serve. Good morning. And uh, welcome to this worship service this morning as we begin this season of Thanksgiving that's ahead of us and the season of celebration for that awesome God that we do serve. Welcome to those of you who are joining us on KLNJ as well as those of you that will be joining us on Facebook. For God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Let's join together in singing Something Good Is About to Happen. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it should happen any day When God's people humble themselves to call on Jesus And they look to heaven expecting as they pray I just feel like something good is about to happen And brother, this could be that very day Let's join our voices together in our call to worship. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. Praise the Lord. Let's join in singing together our first hymn, number 131, We Gather Together. be seated.
Have a seat. But make room for me. Make room for me. Somebody over here. Okay. You're the only one that would let me sit by you. I guess you did too, didn't you? Wow, that was great. The first one you sang was about what? Giving thanks. Okay, why, why do we give thanks? Because of what the Lord has done. Well, what has God done? He created us. Gave us Jesus. Gave us the world. Gave us a house. Yes, okay. And food. What else do we give thanks for? Water. Okay. How about, do we have any answers on this side? Are we only... <clears throat> only on that side? Okay. <clears throat> wow. Well, we give thanks, and this week is Thanksgiving, and, and God is our all in all. You sang last, right? And that we trust God. Later I'm going to talk about things that... Well, I call them idols, things that come between us and, and God, but it's kind of a story form, so I'm not sure if we're all going to get it or not. But the idea is, is that we give thanks because God is our all in all. He is everything to us, and we trust him with all that we have. But we have to be careful not to give things away, too many things, some things. And the reason I'm wearing a mask today, I said I was only going to explain this once, so I didn't explain it to people. And I'm wearing a mask and not shaking hands because yesterday I went to the grocery store and several different people stopped me to tell me that they had colds. <laughs> they were so nice. And uh, so I, I'm trying my best, since I'm traveling around, not to share anything if I happen to pick up germs or anything. But, you know, it is a reminder that this is the time of year. It's, uh, we should do it all year. We should share, but we need to be careful what we share, don't we? <laughs> all right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for all things that you give us. We thank you most of all for that you give us yourself. Help us to always put you first, to see you as our all in all. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. And maybe while you go and be seated, we can sing Jesus Loves Me. And Robbie, before we sing our prayer hymn, I was asked to uh, give this prayer request um, for the Richard Badger family. Uh, Dick Badger was the uh, father of Vicki Heron and has passed away. And she asked if we would announce it because there are many people that would know the, the family and would ask for your prayers for them. Let's prepare our hearts for a time of prayer as we sing together hymn number 2071 we'll sing it twice jesus name above all names
Let's join our voices together in prayer. Open wide the window of our spirits, O Lord, and fill us full of light. Open wide the door of our hearts that we may receive and entertain you will all our powers of adoration and love through Jesus Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34 from the New International Version. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not, are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together our next hymn, Come, Be Ye Thankful People, Come, number 694. Please stand if you are able.
Thank you, Glenda. Wow. Isn't it nice to hear the organ? Yes. I was supposed to tell you that after church today, downstairs, there's still items from the UMW Bazaar. And you can pick them up for a steal or for cash. Let us pray. Hear, O Hampton, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And we must love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. We join in, O Lord, with your people in praying the Shema, the Jewish morning prayer. Yet, like your people of old, we too fall short in living that total commitment. Forgive us, O God. Teach us new ways to follow the leading of your Spirit as we endeavor to rid ourselves of the idols that would captivate our attention, of the good intentions that would distract our worship and service of you alone, of the worries that would freeze us into the status quo. Energize this life-giving spirit to seek first the reign of God in our lives, our church, and our world. Give us the grace to hear your word in the gentle whisperings of the Holy Spirit within. And give us a love to let all, all other, other words sift away. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. From time to time, I try to do sermons in a little di bit different fashion. Today is one of those, so I apologize in advance because I have to stick really close to my manuscript. Because this morning we're going to take a trip. A trip into the twisted mind of your pastor. A trip into the pastor's silly way of looking at Bible stories that I hope are familiar. But instead of taking the stories as they happen, I want us to read the lessons from this morning's Mathean passage into other stories. And so first, we visit the Old Testament story of deliverance as found in the book of Exodus. God has heard the cries of his people for freedom, for a better life with more pay, fringe benefits, and more time off. That's what we all want, right? Now, I know you think that he called Moses. But before God did that whole burning bush thing with Moses, he called up pastor, no excuse too small, and went to a leadership council meeting of the first church of the status quo. God said, I'm tired of the way things have been going. I want to do a new thing, work miracles, show this old world that I'm a miracle-working, awe-inspiring God. I want to send you back in time to set my people free from the bondage of Pharaoh and Egypt. Pastor, no excuse too small, cleared his throat, stalling for time, and finally said, Well, you are God, and we say that we follow you, but before we just up and go, we need to check this out. We need to have a feasibility study to study all of this. Yes, said the Church of the Status Quo Finance Chair. I've never traveled back in time, so I'm not sure of the exchange rate. But I can't imagine it would be very cheap to lead a couple million people to freedom. Do you think just because you're a god that you can feed them with bread and meat from the sky in the middle of nowhere? Oh, God said, I think that might be arranged. Well, even so, said Mr. Finance Chair. I think if you check your Rand McNally, now everybody who's younger will have to ask somebody older what that is. That is desert country. And if my history teachers were any good, I don't think there were any McDonald's or Casey's or Quick Stars along the way. Just where do you propose that we find water for all those people? Do you really think you can just make water gush out of rocks? As a matter of fact, God said, I've been known to do a few water miracles in my time. Well, even so, 
Mr. Finance Chair was now getting warmed up. There aren't any Walmarts along the way either. So just how do you propose that we buy enough clothing, shoes, and other accessories for two million people, even if we could raise the money to pay for it? And here I'm thankful for pulpits pounding the table for emphasis. God says a little louder than he intended to. Enough already. Vision must not be limited by the bottom line, but your bottom line is limited by your vision. Pastor, no excuse too small, nervously interjects, now, now, Lord, we're only trying to make sure that we're up to this new, 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 new challenge. After all, you wouldn't want us to take on more than we can do, would you? That's right, said the leadership council chair. We have to know what we're getting ourselves into before we just jump in and make fools of ourselves. We play a little game around here whenever a new project, ministry, or mission idea presents itself. It's called the what is. And now I stop and look up, and it's the fourth time I've preached this, and your faces look either confused or else you're studying or you're wondering just how crazy this pastor is. I'm not sure which. But you don't need this pastor to tell you about the what ifs because we are good at playing the what ifs. What if the sun doesn't shine on the day of the church of the Beads Lake worship service and picnic? What if gas prices continue to rise and we can't afford to heat and cool the church to the temperatures to which the people have grown accustomed. What if this silly preacher we have continues to stay and preach sermons like this one? Or the opposite, what if this silly preacher leaves and we get one that's even crazier? Well, you can scratch that because there aren't any preachers any crazier than this one. But that doesn't stop us from playing the what ifs. We continually find reasons to worry. That's human. But it's what we do with our worries that makes the difference. In the Older Testament book of Daniel, Daniel and his three friends were, were young slaves in Babylon. As slaves being trained by the government, their diet was set by the Babylonian Food and Drug Administration. I'm sure you've read that in your Bibles, right? However, there was just one problem. It wasn't kosher, but Daniel and his posse were. Put God to the test, says Daniel. Feed us kosher food and see what happens. Then later on in the book, Daniel's posse refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's idol. I think they probably got tired of spelling his name on official government-issued documents. After all, it was a lot harder with hammer and chisel and stone than it is today with computers. Bow down or I'll throw you in the fiery furnace, O King Neb growled at them. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, Put our God to the test. Whatever happens, happens, but we won't bow down. Still later on in the book, in the evil empire of the Medes and Persians that replaced the Babylonians, an edict from the king states that no one may bow down to any god for 30 days except for the king, or they will become lion food. Well, I guess old Daniel always wondered what the inside of a lion looked like. Because he went into his room, opened the doors toward the east, and prayed, looking toward Jerusalem. The king didn't want to do it, but there was no escape clause in the original edict. Daniel, by his actions, said, put God to the test. I can snore louder than those lions can roar. Oops, that last line is about your pastor, not Daniel. Aren't you glad I don't sleep through my sermons? Of course, you know the rest of the story. God came through. The kosher food made the Hebrew slaves look sharper and do better on the test than their Gentile counterparts. God came through as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ate s'mores with the Son of God, while the guards who threw them in the fiery furnace died of heat stroke. And God came through as Daniel used the lions for pillows as the king stayed up all night 
praying and worrying over what he had done. Aren't you glad that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew what to do with the what-ifs? They took them to God and just kept on doing what is right. Of course, if they hadn't, this sermon would have been considerably shorter, so maybe you aren't so glad that they knew what to do with the what-ifs. So what about us? Are we ruled by the budget or the bottom line? You would have received by this time pledge cards and been asked to return them. We ask you to consider the budget for next year and what you can give. Truth of the matter is, you know, we decide whether we're ruled by the bottom line as a church or not. Or are we hampered by the what ifs? Those, I believe, are the questions that are, are raised in Jesus speaking in Matthew 6. Those who worry about what they will wear or what they will eat. Those who are ruled by the bottom line or budget are constantly wondering if God can provide for the ministry that God has called us to do. From the very first time I came, I said it. I have always believed. And I will continue to believe until God lets me down that if we are spiritually where God wants us to be and we are doing what we really believe God wants us to be doing, God will always provide the means to do it. The bottom line of the budget is not the bottom line in ministry or mission. Our vision should not be limited by our bottom line. But our lack of vision can limit our bottom line. Why should God entrust us with resources if we aren't going to use them to enhance the kingdom of God on earth? I'll say that one again. Why should God entrust us with resources if we aren't going to use them to enhance the kingdom of God on earth? Now I dare you to say amen to that one. No, actually, I dare all of us to say amen with our pocketbooks. Or maybe we feel more like saying ouch from time to time. Too many times we become hampered by the what-ifs. In my mind, the what-ifs are just another way of saying we can't trust God to do what God says God will do. Try saying that three times fast. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about being unrealistic. I'm not talking about failing to take the time to count the cost. I'm not talking about being absurd. I am talking about believing in the God who can take chaos and nothingness and create the heavens and the earth. I am talking about believing in the God who can take a ragtag family of slaves and overthrow the most powerful kingdom on the face of the earth as God leads his people out of bondage. I am talking about believing in the God who says love can overcome the power of hatred and bigotry and violence. I am talking about the God who has proven faithful through the history recorded in the Bible, through the, his church down through the ages, and yes, through the Hampton United Methodist Church. I am talking about believing in the God who says put me to the test. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. A church with too many gods, a church that is ruled by the budget and hampered by the what-ifs, a church that is, is a church that is left with no energy or time to seek the kingdom or reign of God. What God do we serve? Do we serve the God of the impossible? The God who says over and over again, put me to the test and see if I can't provide. Or do we serve the gods of the status quo, the shrinking vision and play it safe? The choice is always up to us. I believe that God has a future for his church. I believe that God has a future for his church in this area, in this church. Will we be a part of that ever-enlarging future that God gives? The choice is ours. Let us pray. And as...
a part of my prayer and want to draw upon a hymn. Source and sovereign rock and cloud, fortress, fountain, shelter, light, judge, defender, mercy, might, life is life, all life in doubt. May the church at prayer recall that no single holy name but the truth behind them all is the God whom we proclaim. Word and wisdom, root and vine, shepherd, savior, servant, lamb, well and water, bread and wine, way who leads us to I am. May the church at prayer recall that no single holy name but the truth behind them all is the God whom we proclaim. Storm and stillness, breath and dove, thunder, tempest, whirlwind, fire, comfort, counselor, presence, love, energies that never tire. May the church at prayer recall that no single holy name, but the truth behind them all, is the God whom we proclaim. God of many names, yet the one God of all creation, Help us to seek you first. Help us to trust when we cannot see the way or the results. Help us to follow you into your vision of who we are and what we can become. Amen. Let's join our voices together in singing our next hymn. Number 102, Now Thank We All Our God. Please stand if you are able. Mr. Peterson was a tourist from Toronto, and he went to the Holy Lands, and arriving at the airport in Israel, he took a taxi, and as he settled into the taxi, he asked the driver, is this a healthy place? Well, the taxi driver said, yes, it is. As a matter of fact, when I came here, I couldn't say a word. I barely had any hair, and I didn't have enough strength to walk from room to room, I had to be carried in and out of bed. Peterson said, oh, well, how long have you been here? And the driver said, I was born here. <laughs> it's a matter of perspective, isn't it? It's a matter of focus. Rather than focusing on all the reasons why we can't, we should focus on the reason we can. The God who has said that he would be with us. 
So, so this day and this week, let us go. Let us go and follow Jesus as we live God's message of life, love, and hope for all. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit be evident in our living and in our loving through all eternity.